our sermon now by the Right Reverend Dr. Joseph Ortiano Asanga. Good morning, Reverend Zeneta. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it is once again a great privilege for me to have the opportunity to share with you from the word of God. Let me thank Reverend Zeneta and the leadership of the Episcopal Church of the Holy Spirit for inviting me to speak to you this morning. The theme of our sharing is an invitation to live a life worthy of our calling, a life that is nourished by Christ himself, who is the bread of life. Uh, let me once again bring greetings from the Diocese of Marseille West, from Bishop John Mark Haung, and from Mama Jennifer. And let me once again say, maybe for those who do not know, that we've had a partnership in mission for a long time between the Diocese of Marseille West and the Episcopal Church of the Holy Spirit uh, in Matapan. And we want to continue this relationship. Uh, our Bishop has pledged that he will continue to be in partnership with your church. And we too, since we've registered Bishop Wasonga Foundation, we hope to continue to work together uh, with you as partners in mission. Let me thank the church for your support in training the clergy of the Diocese of Marseno West, your support in our work to minister to uh, orphans and vulnerable children, your support as we provided sexuality education to try to combat the scourge of HIV and AIDS. Thank you for working with us as Mama Jennifer through Agape Counseling and Training Services uh, endeavored to offer community counseling and to empower the girl child and keep the girl child in school. Mama has not gotten a visa to come, but we, our prayer is still that she will soon get to get to the embassy uh, for an interview for the visa. Otherwise, receive her greetings and her love. The text of our sermon this morning will be the epistle and the gospel readings. The epistle is uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 16, and the gospel is John chapter 6, verse 24 to 35. God's word to all of us this morning is an invitation to live a life worthy of the calling we have received by doing the work of God. In the epistle to the Ephesians, the apostle Paul teaches that God brought the Jew and the Gentile into a new relationship in the church. In this passage, Paul now shows how God has made provision for those who are in the church's body to live and work together in unity and to grow together into maturity in faith and practice. This God did by giving his only son, Jesus Christ, the bread of life, our savior, and also by giving to the church different gifts. However, for the church to benefit from the gifts, 
uh, that have been given to various people, our attitude and actions as members of the Christ, of Christ uh, as members of the church, we must adopt the attitude of Christ. Ephesians chapter four verse two says, be completely humble and gentle, be patient and bearing with one another in love. Brothers and sisters, let us remind ourselves that humility is the key to live in harmony with God and also in harmony with our fellow Christians, both in the church and in the community. Humility will enable us to play our roles in the body, will enable you to play your role in the body while giving others room to exercise their gifts. It is, it will help you to be mindful of others and be sensitive to their needs. Indeed, today we are reminded that the church, the body of Christ, is nourished Christ himself, who is the eternal bread of life. Paul encourages us that for us to be nourished and to do what we ought to do, we need to imitate the humility of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter two, verse one to six says, therefore, if you have an encouragement for being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Brothers and sisters, it is humility that will keep us in fellowship with God and with one another. When we remain humble, we are able to remain in fellowship with God and do the will of God as we grow in faithfulness. There are a few lessons that Paul puts forward that will help us to live in unity and to grow to maturity in the church, nourished by Jesus, the bread of life. Number one lesson is that Christ did not use his position to his advantage. And that is a sign of humility. He did not use his position to his own advantage. It means he did not have any kind of self-interest. He did not have any kind of greed, but he emptied himself. 
giving himself to save the church and to serve the will of his father. The Bible also says that he made himself nothing and took on the very nature of a servant. When we devote ourselves to the service of others, we are able to keep the bond of peace. We have been called to live a life worthy of our calling. The life worthy of our calling is to live in oneness with God and with one another, meaning we have fellowship with God and have fellowship with one another. For this fellowship to continue, Christ must become our living bread. He must be the chief cornerstone. He must be the one that nourishes us as we continue to live in unity and to grow to maturity in the church of God. The mark of his humility was obedience to God. He was keen to do the will of the Father. The Bible says he was obedient even to death on the cross. And if we want to live a life worth it, the calling we have received, we must learn to be obedient, obedient to God's word. And that's why reading the word of God, meditating upon the word of God, feasting on the word of God, will nourish us and help us to do the will of God and to live a life worthy the call we have received. This efficient passage brings in another act that will maintain unity and lead to maturity. And that is patience, forbearance, and long suffering. Patience and forbearance is the willingness to seek to understand those who are different from us. The reason we are impatient with the people is because they see things differently from the way we see them. Their thinking and perceptions are different from us and we are not willing to have patience to listen to them and to realize that they too have a role to play in our lives. And so I would like to call us brothers and sisters to train ourselves to be patient and forbearing with one another in the body of Christ, in our families, in our workplaces, and in the church we have to develop patience. Let me share with you that I learned a new meaning of being patient and endurance when I joined the Anglican bishops in a dialogue group. This is a group of bishops from North America and Africa who committed to take time to listen to each other's a ministry story despite their cultural and theological diversity and leaning. We realize that without forbearance, it is impossible to understand why people would take certain decisions in their pastoral and cultural context. But realizing that Jesus came to reconcile sinful humanity with the Holy God to bring the Jew and the Gentile into one family, we are able to keep, he is able to keep us in fellowship with one another despite our differences in our cultural and religious leanings. I am now more willing to let the wheat and the tear grow together until the harvest time and not to be quick to pass judgment. Willingness to listen to other people's stories will keep us united because it is not only about me, 
but it is about my brother and his or her uh, interaction with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we need to learn to be patient. We need to learn to listen to one another. We need to learn to be empathetic with one another. And when we are, then we can build the bond of peace. For, one, uh, for when we are willing uh, to love one another with the love of God, we are able to be patient. This is bearing with one another, caring for one another's needs and feeling, uh, feeling with, uh, with one another. As we walk together as bishops in dialogue, we developed not only tolerance, but ability to forgive those who hurt us and those who hurt other people by the decisions they make, because we know that the one who can nourish, uh, nourish us, heal our hearts and keep us going together is Jesus, who is the bread of life. The Bible encourages us to make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. I believe this we must do because we have the same identity in Christ. We have one Lord, one baptism, and one Father, and one Father. We have one purpose to remain obedient to him and in his service. So brothers and sisters, this morning, our invitation is to live a life worthy of the calling we have received. When there is disintegration in the world, when there is argument and counter arguments in the world, when there is no peace in the world, the body of Christ must be a beacon of peace, a beacon of unity. And it is through you and me being willing to humble ourselves, being willing to listen to one another, being willing to give one another space and being dependent on Jesus who will nourish our souls and make it possible for us to even love the unlovable, possible for us to be patient with those who seem outrageous. It is him who then will give us the ability to live a life worthy of the calling we have received. Brothers and sisters, for us to remain united and to grow to maturity in the knowledge of Christ, we must appreciate the different gifts given to members of the body and use these gifts to equip all the people of God for the work of service. The Bible tells us it is possible now to live in the body of Christ, the church, because Christ himself has made provision for us. He has given us gifts. He has called some to be evangelists, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be leaders and teachers, some to be administrators, and he has made this provision to enable the body of Christ to live a life of service to which the body of Christ has been called. And so as I move towards the close of my sermon, I need to emphasize that for us to live a life worthy of our calling, we must remain united and we can only remain united with one another when our union with Christ is intact. And what will keep our union with Christ intact is our humility, surrendering to his will and saying like he did, not my will, but your will be done. John chapter 6 verse 24 is a, a, a story I want to end with. John says, 
that when the crowds had looked for Jesus, they had to cross and they found him in Capernaum, the other side of the sea. And when they arrived there, Jesus told them, I know you are not looking for me because uh, you want eternal life, but you are looking for me because of the, the bread that you ate to nourish your human body. But then these people, after Jesus challenged them, they then asked him, what must we do to do the work that God requires? And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. These people were challenged by Jesus that I know you are coming to me, not because you seek eternity, but because you ate bread and you want more of that bread. Then because of that challenge, they asked Jesus, what can we do to do the work of God? In other words, what is the life worthy of the calling we have received? What can we do to show that we belong to you, to show that we depend upon you? And Jesus told them the work of God is to believe in the one whom he sent. You may wonder why this is necessary for you today, but I realize in the church today, many people seem to compare Jesus with other prophets and in the cults, and many of them are both here in the US and back in Africa, where people tend to think the word of the prophet is more valuable than the word of Jesus Christ, where people are still thinking that there is another savior who is not Jesus Christ. But I want to emphasize uh, what Jesus told these people who are looking for him. The work of God is to believe in the one whom he sent. Let me just ask you, brothers and sisters, what is your faith? When you look at the happenings in the world, do you give up? Do you ask yourself, where is God? When you look at contentions, political bickering, and you look at even the pandemic coming and the confusion about it, does it uh, encourage your faith to be more rooted in Christ? Or you get perplexed and begin to wonder, where will we go? My brother, my sister, the answer to your question this morning, the answer to my question this morning, the work of God is to believe in the one whom he sent. Let us believe that Jesus is Lord, even when the world is running away, they will never run away from him because the Bible says when the right time comes, everything in heaven and on earth will be brought together with Christ as the head. And I want to encourage each one of you that you should not be mesmerized by the challenges you see around you, by the bickerings in our, in, in, uh, by the political class, by different people bringing different isms. Let us stick to Christ. And that is what the Bible is telling us, that once we are mature in Christ, we will not be tossed about with every wind of doctrine, with unfounded prophecies, and with confusing teachings in the church. Today, many people lose faith in the churches they go to. They lose faith in the ministers of the gospel. They lose faith even in their uh, church bodies, faith families. But I want to tell you, to live a life worthy of your calling, you must remain faithful to Jesus because indeed Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the nourishment we need now and in the future. And I want to 
encourage each and every one of us that even when loving your brother becomes difficult, believe that Jesus will give you the ability to love. Even when living together with members of your vestry is becoming contentious and difficult, let us believe Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Even in the family, when you find that living with your children, your wife, your husband, and people around you is challenging, let us know that when we believe in Christ, that he is Lord of all, he is the chief cornerstone upon whom the church is built. He is indeed your savior and my savior. He is indeed the savior even of those people who hurt you. When you believe in him, you will have done the work of God and you will be living a life worth of your calling. I know that the faith of many has been disturbed because of the pandemic we are going through today and because of the various challenges we meet in life. But I want to end by offering prayers to each one of us that God will give us faith that despite everything we see going on wrong or right, Jesus is still Lord. He is the bread of life. There is no other one we can follow but Jesus, who was crucified because of his willingness to do the will of God. And maybe what we need is humility to know that the issue is not about me, but the issue is about doing the will of God. As you go home today, Go decided that you will not go about life thinking of yourself, your own advantage, your own comfort, but you will be thinking of honoring Christ and making him known and making people believe in him because he's not only the savior of the world, he is the bread of the world. He is the nourishment we need to go through life and the nourishment we need when we reach eternity. Shall we bow down and pray? Maybe in your heart, your faith has been weakened because of the challenges you've gone through Maybe your faith is disturbed because of the wrong teachings you've had. Maybe your faith is disturbed because of the conflicts, both in church and in the community. But I want to say that Jesus Christ is alive and is ready to nourish us and to give us life again. He is able to revive us he is able to revive our faith. So shall we pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we want to acknowledge that Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is our savior. He is the only Lord whom we must believe in and whom we must preach. He is the only hope for the world. He is only the answer to the question of sin. He's only the answer to the question of our unity. We can be united in church, not because our needs are met, but because Jesus is honored and glorified. So help each one of us to be humble so that we may live at peace with one another, both in church, in our family, and in our community. Bless each and every one of us and bless members of the Church of the Holy Spirit and the Anglican Diocese of Maseno West. Bless us that we may together do your work and live a life that will attract people to say that Jesus indeed is Lord. Bless us for we pray believing and trusting in Jesus' name, amen.